Today I am reviewing one of the most controversial British film ever made, and no, I'm not talking about Prince Andrews and Jeffrey Epstein's vacation tapes. So why is this fairly tame British exploitation film so controversial? This is the only British film to be on the DDP Video Nasties list in the 1980s. And it even made it to the 39 officially prohibited films from distribution in the United Kingdom. So the Video Nasties controversy in the 80s was just this moral panic. It was brought up by many other panics at the time like Satanism, violent video games, metal music, basically parents not doing their fucking job and trying to make the government do it instead of them. And oh boy was dried up old cunt Margaret Thatcher quick to act on that controversy, you know, because that was obviously the only major problem in the UK at the time. Forget, you know, economic climate, poverty, violence. No, we really have to ban those darn horror movies. Any good politician knows that uh, if there's an actual problem, find something that isn't and make it a major problem. So why was this, out of all British exploitation films, to be totally banned? Well, you see, it deals with female sexuality, which is something that scares rating boards even today. It's almost like men and women who can't make women come are afraid of them doing so. Because it's certainly not the gore, because the gore is very low budget and very tame, and it's certainly not the sex, because the sex is very, very tame. However, it does show female orgasms, which is never good because that doesn't exist. So without further ado, let's get into this gosh darn movie, House on Straw Hill. House on Straw Hill is a film from 1976 starring Udo Kier and Linda Hayden. And Udo Kier plays Paul Martin, an author that's quite successful. Well, he's only written one book, but his one book made half a million dollars, which was a very big deal in 1976. Today you couldn't get a cardboard box in the capital city of Ottawa for that price. I'm really on fire with these social commentaries today. And he's on to writing his second book, and he decided to do it in a remote location in Britain. So in his cabin, he has an old man and woman to take care of the house while he creates stuff. But he's kind of having an issue with writing his new book. The issue is, he has, you know, the typical author in movies, blank page syndrome. So to get inspiration, the film starts with him having sex with his girlfriend, partner, um, fuck friend, Susan who from what I gather was played by a playboy playmate but the English version of that which I don't know what it's called, I don't know beans on toast of the month. Anyways, after a few flashbacks of blood, we can deduce that, you know, Udo Kier's character is kind of a sketchy person. After the coitus, he sends Susan back home into the big city, and the next day you can see he really struggles with typing out his book, so he calls his editor and he's like, yo, I need a typist, which I guess was a job before computers were invented. And the editor, since you know his previous book made them half a million dollar, will gladly send an employee to him. And that employee is none other than the beautiful Linda Hayden. And they meet at the train station while Udo Kier drives his Rolls Royce. She comes out and recognizes him, and then she gets bothered by the town hooligans, which is a guy with a shirt that says I'm a vampire and like really short hair, he looks like a total creep and his friends, and they're both on bikes. And later on, they fight with Udo Kier because they were bothering Linda Aiden. And you can already see that Udo Kier's character tries to play this macho type of guy, but when he fights the two hooligans, he kicks them in the balls. And even Linda Aiden's character is like, Oi, mate, why did you kick him in the balls? I know this was more Australian, I'm sorry. On the way home, Udo Kier explains to her what is his routine. And it's basically, I'm an artist, I type, I write, I create, and then I get fucked up. Yep. 
That sounds about right. They finally get home and Linda, who her character is named Linda by the way, thank you movie for making my job easy, and they already start to work together. And you can see that Linda types very well. She's actually really good at her job, which probably helped her because she's not there just to help out Paul Martin. She's there with a plan. And after one of their work session, she goes upstairs to make him a coffee, but she stops to finger blast herself while looking at a picture of a man that we'll see in a lot of flashbacks. Spoiler alert, that man is Linda's husband who was killed by Paul Martin, Udo Kier's character, to rip off his book. And Udo Kier's character even dedicated his first book to the man he killed and stole the text from. And that's why Linda is there, to take revenge on her husband. But how will she do that? Well, before I get to that, uh, since this is the 70s, I have to get to of course, the rape scene, which happens when Linda decides to go outside to um, play with herself and then the two hooligans are there to watch her and then they force her at gunpoint to have sex with them. However, she plays it up that she's turned on and she starts uh, playing with the gun and then shoots both of the hooligans. However, no one in the house um, heard it because Udo Kier was too busy looking at her panties. You see, Linda's plan is to use her sexuality as a weapon. After a while, Paul feels a sexual tension built up between him and Linda, so he tries to make a move on her, and she isn't quite down with that, and she's like, yo, you have a job to do, maybe after. And like a child who can't have his toy, he throws a tantrum and calls Susan, and makes Linda go pick her up at the train station, but not in the Rolls Royce, in the poorest people car. But all of that is in Linda's plan, because she will seduce Susan, which will make Paul even more frustrated, and and he takes out his rage on Susan. After he roughs up Susan, he hears a car going out and he thinks it's Linda doing something sketchy because Paul is very paranoid because he killed a man and didn't get caught. Anyway, he runs out of the house, doesn't understand what is going on, and during that time, Linda takes advantage of that situation to, well, have a relationship with Susan and then fucking kill her. When Paul gets back, Linda is like, yo, you gotta finish the book. And he's like, oh, I'm distraught. I don't know how I'll finish this book. And she's like, oh, I'll finish it for you. You fucking hack, you fucking fraud, you killed my husband. And he's like, oh, shit, I got caught. And and then Linda tries to kill him and then doesn't succeed. So obviously I recommend this film, it's one of my favorite British exploitation film, which is very interesting because usually when you think of British exploitation, you don't think of a film like this. This is a film that made in any other context, any other country, would probably not have known as many controversies. But the fact that this is British also makes it more interesting. You see, well in Britain, even today, you had to have massive balls to even attempt an exploitation film. And this was basically banned because, well, this was a low-budget and dependent production and not a work of a massive director like Ken Russell. So if you needed any more reasons why being British is cringe, this is one of them. Anyways, have a good week and haha, <laughs> the Queen is dead. See, I made it through the entire video without making a dead Queen joke, yes.